Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. Hope you enjoy. Story number one. Never trust a human. Written by K. Cern. Never trust a human. A simple but effective rule. And one I strive to live by every time I have deal with one of those damned monkeys. I am ashamed to admit it. But it was we, Kurong, that were responsible for making first contact with humans and introducing them to the galaxy at large. Ever since the Great Diaspora, we have roamed the stars, searching for new goods to trade, new markets to corner, and new customers to suck a uh, please. And what better market than a mineral-rich system eager for access to the stars beyond? Anyone would have done the same in our place. For the paltry cost of sharing our FTL technology, the humans were more than willing to make us their sole trading partners, a deal that we could not possibly refuse. They were practically there already anyways, a generation or two at most away from working it out themselves. And what a stir that created when they first arrived from the galactic scene, from a novel technologies to new medicine, bizarre fashions and a vast wealth of entertainment. They seemingly had something for everyone, gods. You still can't visit a bookstore or see a movie without the latest human crap being pushed front and center to this very day. I was a freelance trader when we made first contact with the humans, buying goods in one sector and selling in another, always chasing that big payday. So of course, when the human craze swept the galaxy, I set course for the human system with a hold full of knickknacks from the Tau Setians and the anti-tumor drugs from the Epsilonians. Total junk. But the humans didn't know that. In fact, they went nuts for the stuff, especially the drugs. Something about curing some kind of common cell mutation disease. The primitives didn't even have nanites yet, but it meant I made a tidy profit and left with a hold full of human goods. And uh, something extra. A human crew member. Now, I've had a crew from all over the galaxy. Techno-organics from the sphere, cephalopods from the camelopardados, and even a Vengeganite during the stint in the fringes. I'm the furthest thing from a xenophobe as you could get. But this fellow was downright weird. He claimed to be an engineer of some sort, but its solution to everything always seemed to boil down to hitting something with something else. Percussive maintenance, they called the process. Utterly barbaric. Though, I had to admit, it did seem to work. It also had some of the weirdest habits of any sentient I had ever had the displeasure of spending time with. The most annoying, it called itself a hugger, meaning that it seemed determined to drape its gangly arms over every other sentient aboard every chance it had. In fact, it seemed to crave this physical interaction and became quite withdrawn when asked to restrain itself, promising to do so glumly. At least until it appeared to completely forget its promise and went right back to hugging. It had then insisted on using our limited water supply for its daily cleaning ritual, and not just a simple wiping and moistening that you might expect from a loric or a surak, but a full body immersion in water, complete with cleaning chemicals to strip the dirt and oils from its body. No wonder it was constantly losing skin cells if it was scrubbing itself so often. It was only a short shower, it had claimed. Perhaps the most shocking, though, was when it came to feeding. As an omnivore species, I'd assumed that it would have no issue in the hydro kelp that is standard fare on all Kurang vessels. But what I had not expected was that it would insist to be boiled or fried or otherwise prepared before eating, citing that raw plant would upset the digestive system and making comparisons to some kind of local fauna farmed for food. And the amount that it could eat, it insisted, was a light eater, but I could swear I've seen beasts ten times its size that ate less. Even just talking to the creature was infuriating. It was as if it simply could not string a sentence together without contradicting itself or outright lying. You'd ask how it was fairy, and it would reply, No, yeah, you know how it is, chief. Stick me in an engine room and I'm uh, like a pig and shit. What does that even mean? All the time I asked if it had completed its assigned tasks, and it had replied, Well, I ain't here to fix spiders, am I? My translator just about imploded trying to resolve that one. I quickly learned not to trust anything the creature said at face value, and settled for doing my best to avoid it as much as possible. Not an easy task on a ship the size of mine at 
the time. Despite all of this, we had settled into a comfortable routine and were approximately halfway to our destination when disaster struck. Noodlians out of the Ramoon Nebula, they had managed to sneak up on us and took our drives out before we even knew that they were there. I knew right away that we were doomed. Today, Noodlians are largely peaceful beings, but back in the day they were the ruthless pirates and slavers, a scourge on the galaxy. And so it was that I was leading a prayer to the gods for mercy on the bridge for my small crew. All of us huddled together when I felt the ship shudder as the ship clamped onto mine. We were about to be boarded. Safe! Suddenly came the call on my communication unit. It was then that I realized the human was missing from our huddle, and I felt my heart sink. As strange and annoying as it had been, no being deserved to be alone when faced with death or enslavement. Chief, fire up the engines! The human shouted over the communications unit. Poor creature, I remember thinking. It didn't know that we were crippled by the opening shots. The engines are offline, human Jessica, I informed it. Please join us on the bridge for a prayer. All will be over soon if we do not resist. No time for group hugs. I've rerouted the electrics. Chief, you should be have enough to skip to the nearest servo. The human had responded, shouting over the terrifying sounds of blaster fire over the comm. Pulling myself free from the fearful group of my crew, I checked the skip drive console. By the gods, the human was right, I had thought. But I quickly felt my elation die as I recalled the noodling ship was clamped tight to us. A skip now would tear us in half. Too late, human Jessica, I said over the comm. We have been coupled to their vessel and they are boarding us already. Don't worry about the party crashes, chief, the human replied, laughing. It was actually laughing. I've convinced them to head home early. Checking the onboard scanners, I was shocked to confirm the human's words. In fact, only the bridge reported any life forms present. Both the boarders and the human were missing. Human Jessica, I called, hearing the strangled sound of my own voice. Please, uh, state your location. Just giving our new friends a parting gift. The human had responded, and I swear I could hear Noodlian screams in the background. The ship shuddered again, and then I realized we were no longer connected to the pirate vessel. Get the crew to safety, demanded the human, and this time I was certain I could hear screams. I will not leave while a member of my crew is not on board. I trumpeted my refusal, my throat sacks convulsing with fear and determination. Fuck! that one was built like a brick shit house came the human's confusing response. Then, bloody punch it already, chief. I'm coming aboard for a group hug right now. Praying to the gods under my breath, I didn't give myself time to question the human as I activated the skip drive and felt reality smear around me. The sensation only lasted a few heartbeats before ending with a bone-jarring shake that tossed me to the floor. Alarms informing me our engines had suffered complete failure. Putting myself back to my feet, I frantically checked our location. The human had done it. We were orbiting a small red dwarf, drifting slowly towards the local shipyard. I activated my communicator unit to inform the human that we were safe. But there was no response. My heart rose into my throat sacks. Checking the scanners confirmed my fears. The human had never made it back on board. She hadn't even tried to. Once again, she had lied to me. Angrily. I wiped away the tears prickling my eyes and contacted the shipyard to request aid. Never trust a human. A simple but effective rule. End of story. Story number two. We never thought they'd actually help. Written by Dash MH2 Dash. When we signed a little formal agreement, a nicety decades ago, that's all we thought of it. A writ of words promising some arbitrary assistance if the other was ever in distress. We never counted on it being fruitful. We expected it to be a slight drain in time, but the diplomatic balancing was deemed acceptable. So we were truly desperate when we actually acted on it. When we were bloodied, bruised, our enemy burning our worlds and butchering our young. The desperate scrambling of our kind as we sat on the edge of extinction and arrived at this little nicety amongst hundreds of other forgotten archives. We don't know what to say about what happened next. We were terrified when we saw the ships approaching, entire armadas entering the gravity wells of our system, our financial systems flaring with entries, our communication channels spinning to the brim. 
When the capital ships entered the skies over our world, washing the enemy overhead in hellfire with ruthless brutality, when we received gifts not just from politicians, but even the slightest nobodies, even from the young. Little slides of data with poetry, kind words, expressions of admiration at our valor, respect for our cause, and fervor that left our people shaken at their kindness, considerateness, and even as we watched the brutal efficiency with which their fleets dismantled the enemy that had been on the verge of sending us into a quiet night. The gentle care of the aid workers as their soldiers moved like creatures of myth. One tending to our wounds, the others scoured our foe from our homes. When we could form words again to answer, to thank for the help we received, we didn't truly know what to say. We could only express that we were glad that we took the time to make a small nicety with these humans years ago. End of story. I would quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and Patreons. Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Lord Azrakal, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Dragzoon WRE, Holly's Sister, Arcadian. Thank you very much.